Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Utah Stories Clips. I wanted to make a special video explaining the controversy surrounding the inland port. So the idea is to develop 16,000 acres of unused land on the northwest quadrant of Salt Lake City, which is currently underdeveloped, underused because it's sort of marsh wetlands. So why is this such a controversial issue? Let's look at some footage of what the downtown Chamber of Commerce looked like at the beginning of July. As you can see, things have reached a fever pitch. There were people throwing punches, cops trying to defend themselves. This is just not what you see in downtown Salt Lake. The reason why I believe people are so angry over this is that it's absolutely obvious that the government is subverting the will of the people. They are ignoring the democratic processes and they are deciding they know what's best and we should just simply trust them. Um, I had a conversation with Rocky Anderson concerning this issue just last week and I want to show you a clip from that conversation now. Give away to developers by moving the prison, number one, and now the inland port basically taking control of 30% of the land in Salt Lake City, ripping Salt Lake City off of uh, uh, millions and millions of dollars in incremental tax base, taking the power away from our city council, planning and zoning commission, and the mayor for land use decisions that determines what kind of a city we're going to have far into the future. And it's all going to be controlled by an unelected commission. That's just absolutely wrong. And the future of our city really depends on this. And environmentally, it's going to be uh, a disaster as well. We need those decisions made by our elected officials who, if we disagree with them, we can go out and replace them in the democratic manner that our elections provide to us. But uh, it's... It's, at the bottom of it, so unbelievably corrupt, and that's what we get with a one-party system, and it's what we get in some of these instances, like the initiatives, especially Proposition 2 and the undermining of Proposition 2 and replacing it with House Bill 3001 at the behest of the LDS Church. Yeah. And we have to be able to talk about these things. Yeah. It's not insulting. People shouldn't be shocked. Oh, my gosh, you can't say that. No, we have to be able to talk the truth. And we know that Marty Stevens, who's head of the governmental relations for the LDS Church, used to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the Utah Legislature. Well, then he was doing a Speaker of the House for the LDS Church, what he's now getting paid by the Church to do, and that is to control governmental policy in alignment with what the LDS Church wants. Now, I think we should all be respectful of each other, there ought to be input from everybody, but when you get to the point where it's a fait accompli, where we know that the LDS Church is simply going to get its way, and we know that's the truth. We, we know it's the truth with alcohol laws. There, there's not a bill that will see the light of day in the Utah legislature if it doesn't have the seal of approval of the highest ranking people in the LDS Church. So Rocky Anderson, the reason why I think he's an authority on this subject is he's one of the rare political leaders in Utah that has not been bought off by special interests. Now, there are a handful that still exist, but Rocky Anderson, according to all the business owners I've spoken to, was certainly a champion of small business and the people. We live in a bull shape. Nobody wants to see more pollution in our valley or semi-trucks on the road. If we lived in a terrible economy, maybe we could consider the economic impact as being a good enough factor to discredit all of the negative implications this idea will have. Our Utah State Legislature and Governor get millions of dollars from special interests. Many of the members in the state legislature are working for developers. The entire prison move idea, which is happening 15 years earlier than it should have happened, is entirely because the Utah State Senate president owned land around the prison. And so many people in the Utah State legislature 
benefited from that move. The same is the case with this inland port. It absolutely should not be happening, and and our our anger is boiling over. I was not at this protest rally, but I could absolutely identify with these protesters because we cannot ignore our democratic processes when it concerns our quality of life, where we've all invested so much into living here and enjoying what Utah has to offer. Thanks for watching this special edition of the Utah Stories Show, Utah Stories Clips. To get more information about Utah Stories, visit utahstories.com. You can follow us on Instagram. I would highly suggest you subscribe to our newsletter. That way you'll be alerted as soon as the full episode with Rocky Anderson comes out right around July 23rd. Thanks for watching.